Praise the Lord and welcome to another Hand of God live service. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. And today we're in Riviera Beach, Florida, where we'll be airing live on the internet, Ustream, YouTube by playback, and in front of the faithful few that's here today in service today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day, Lord Jesus. We feel your sun shining on us, Father God, which is evidence that we're alive and we're in the land of the living, Father God. Someone last night or this morning was time was up here on earth, Father God. Just ask and pray, Father God, you give us the wisdom, strength, the power, and the anointing to do what you've called us to do, Father God. You've given us a destiny. You've given us a, a choice, Father God. Lead us, guide us, and direct us in everything we do will and say. Now, Father God, I just ask the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be speaking out of Matthew chapter 8. Start at verse 5. On the subject entitled, Say the Word or Speak the Word. Speak the Word. Glad to be here, been here since October 26th this year, and I'm glad to be here. You know, a lot of things been going on in the ministry, the, uh, and I'm excited. Things that God is doing and change. Everybody there? Chapter 8, right? Yep, chapter 8, verse 5 is where we're going to start. The Bible reason is wise, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came him unto him a centurion, beseeching him, verse 6, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented, verse 7. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed, verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10. Jesus heard it, and he marveled and said unto them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 11. And I say unto you, that shall come from the east and the west, and sit down, with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12. But the children of, of, the, of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed it, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed that self same hour. And his servant was healed that self-same hour. We're going to stop right there. I want, to, I want to speak on, like I said, a subject coming out of verse number 8, where he said, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes here. Speak the word only. I want to give you a little background on the centurion soldier, because... If you like me, up until yesterday when God gave me this word, I didn't know what really too much about centurion soldiers. First of all, a centurion soldier was a Roman. He was a Roman soldier in a Roman army. You got to understand, in that day, there was Jews, Hebrews, Gentiles, and Romans. The Romans was in charge, and you could look at the Romans as today as like the police or the government. That's pretty much how the Romans, if you want to get an understanding of who the Romans were, the Romans was like that. Now, the centurion soldier... The centurion, to be a centurion, you had to be the man, kind of almost. Because a centurion soldier, he had a hundred guys under him. And he got paid more than a common soldier. You had to be a person who was uh, pretty good at your craft to be a centurion soldier. So this is a centurion soldier. So the, the, the Bible makes it clear that this man came to Jesus. Now, first of all, you need to understand something. The Romans didn't like no chaos. Just like the police don't like drama and problems. Whenever you have a problem with the police and they show up, their job, their problem, their job is to sort it out. So that they won't have a problem. That's how the, the, the centurion soldier of the Romans was in that time. They didn't like headaches. They didn't like problems. They didn't like the fact that Jesus showed up and was getting people stirred up and riled up. They didn't like that. 
So you got to place in your mind, here's a man who not only is not of the faith, but he don't. his job is to keep Jesus and them in check. But here he is. He got the centurion soldier. It says right here, he says, I have someone who's sick. It says sick. He says, verse 6, and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Now, why would a centurion soldier, who don't even be in uh, Matthew chapter 8, Pee -wee, why would a centurion soldier, someone who don't even believe or even know anything about Jesus, matter of fact, it's his job to keep him quiet, why would he come to Jesus and ask for prayer? This is where I talk to a lot of people who claim they don't know Jesus. Well, you know, I don't believe in all that church stuff. I don't believe in praying. I don't believe in the music. I don't believe I need to go to the... This, this guy, he was raised to be a Roman soldier. Talk about somebody who didn't know nothing about nothing. He wasn't even raised near the faith, let alone of the faith. But what, what I can tell you from my studies is that this man heard about Jesus. They heard about this man that came to town and started healing people and delivering people. And based off of what he had heard about him, he said, when his, when his servant got sick, he said, hold on, man. You know what? I know I'm not supposed to do this because of who I am, but I'm going to step out of who I am and, and ask this man, could he come? And, and heal my servant, or could he speak a word and heal my servant? So often, so time, you, you think you, you don't have a right to pray to God because of the way you're living, or the way you've been living. Or I've heard people say in the streets when I'm doing ministry, I had a World War II veteran one time. We was in, I think it was in Alabama, and we went up to the old man, and he was just crying profusely. And I said, what's wrong, brother? He said, man, I can't go to heaven. I said, why not? He said, I killed people in the war. And the Bible says, thou shalt not murder. I said, brother, let me tell you something. You was under authority. You was, under, you was following orders when you did that. You didn't kill somebody in the street. And even if you did, Jesus gave you forgiveness for that. So often, so many times in our lives, we will create a system in our head or in our lives that we can't go to God and ask for help. I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what kind of position or condition you find yourself in. God created you, and you have a right to go to God and say, God, I need help with my life. That's the number one reason with most people. They feel like this is it. This is not it. Especially in dealing with these kinds, this is, this is not the end of your road. This is not what God created you for. There's a lot of people that was out there in these streets right now who was voted most valuable to succeed, who was superstars on the football field or the basketball court, and find themselves homeless. I've just seen on Yahoo how an NFL football player found himself homeless after losing all his money. He's not homeless because he ain't got no money or he ain't got no house. He's homeless because he forgot who Jesus Christ is. And you might say, well, maybe he never knew who Jesus Christ was. Neither did this centurion soldier. That Roman soldier wasn't raised to know who Jesus Christ was. Everybody here may have seen the movie 300. Those are Roman soldiers. They're, they're taught to fight and defend Spartan, defend Rome. That's what they taught to do. They ain't taught how to, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. They ain't taught, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. They ain't taught none of that kind of stuff. But this man right here said in verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come into my room. Right there, he is respecting the deity of who Jesus Christ is. He says, I'm not worried that you should come under my roof. That's why it's so important that we make people respect this house of God. Because what you don't understand, when people don't respect God and his people, they can fall dead. It's just that simple. People think a lot of times I'm correcting them. I'm not correcting you because of me. There's been plenty of people who put their hands on me and ended up in a lot of problems. Not for me, from either the law or sickness or disease. Because I belong to God, just like you belong to God. I tell people all the time, go ahead, do what you're going to do. I'm God's property. That's why he said I'm not worthy because he recognized who Jesus was. Because I can imagine him being a centurion soldier in his locker room getting dressed for work one day. And they in there talking, man, you hear about that Jew dude that showed up that, that's healing people and raising people from the dead. They in there talking amongst each other. And this, he probably sitting there scratching his head he's like, why he out there doing that? And so he said, I'm not worthy. Just come over. Verse 9 says, for I am a man under authority. Now he's, he's, help, he's helping Jesus understand why he believed that he can speak the word only. He says, for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me. Like I said, centurions have a hundred men under them. And if I say to this man, go, he go. If another come, he cometh. And to the servant to this, he doeth it. He's helping Jesus. He's, he's explaining to Jesus, like, look, all I need you to do is speak the word. The very thing you got in your hand is the power for your deliverance. I remember when I was a little kid, they was like, read your Bible. I'm like, man, I don't want to read no Bible. It's boring. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. My whole life, read your Bible. Read your Bible. It wasn't until I read that Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the whole Bible, that my life changed. Because that is the power that that centurion soldier activated when, he, when Jesus said, when he told Jesus, speak the word only. This is the word of the living God. If you put your faith in God and know that this is the word of God, 
this can change everything about you. I don't care what, what kind of, I mean, I look at Catholic, and I, I come to the realization that some people don't want to get better. You ain't going to get better unless you want to get better. This dude wanted his servant healed. Haven't you ever had a loved one who you wanted to be healed, and even though you know you wasn't going to church, you was living like a rascal, you got on your knees and said, God, I don't want my child to die or my auntie or my uncle to die. You got to know this word so that word can back you up. That's what Jesus was doing. Jesus was backing this soldier up. He was saying, he said, I, and Jesus said to the Syrian, go thy way, 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed that same hour. Here you go, this Roman dude whose job is to arrest Jesus now, had enough power to pray to Jesus and get his servant healed. Because he says, as thou hast believed. You can't believe in something you don't know. Oh, don't you know that you can speak the word and, and they'll put, put angels it, 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 to work for you? You can, you can speak the word and, and have things change in your life, supernatural things. I know people look at Christians like they're crazy. I used to. Shouting and talking about what God then did. That God. But then I, as, I, as I started doing it and speaking it, I started watching the same things happen in my life. I thank God for Facebook and memories because I put everything on Facebook. And then, like, like in 2012, when I came here for the first time and sat in Miami myself in the seat right there because I was lost. People, a lot of people don't even know how I ended up here. Or they may or may not have heard their story. It was a girl on a single site who I was talking to. She said, I'm here in West Palm Beach. Because I was looking for a place warm to come and do ministry because in Columbus it gets cold. And I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm friends with people. Yeah, it's a single site, but I'm friends with people. I ain't got time to be hollering no chicks. I ain't got no problem getting chicks. But I go on there and do witness and ministry. So I'm talking to her on this single site. She said, hey, you ever thought about coming to try in Florida? I said, nah, what's the temperature there? She said, oh, it's, it's cool. It's, it's, it's good in, in the wintertime. So I said, okay, I'll look into it. So I prayed. God said, hey, you might want to look into that. So she said, yeah, I got a, a, a house that you can go stay at when you come in West Palm. So I said, I'll come check it out. So October 2012, I came down here, got a plane ticket, came down here, and she let me use her car while she was at work. And I'm riding around lost. I said, I want to find a beach because I ain't never been to no real beach. So I ended up on Singer Island. Didn't even know it was Singer Island then. I just went there. Then on my way back, I was supposed to keep going straight, and I turned here, and I said, it said free Wi-Fi. So I pulled in there and parked right there. Sat at the table that was sitting right there, and the building was yellow then or something. It was either yellow or orange or some color. And I sat there. I did a video, which is on YouTube. And I, I looked over here across the street, and I said, Valley Love, what in the world is that? Walked in here, walked in the office, and said, hello, my name is Sean Scott. I'm here. I'm from Columbus. Do you need help? She said, yeah. I said, I'll be back, and walked out. That was 2012. But what people don't understand before that happened is I've been praying for God to use me in the wintertime, because in the summertime, I do this in Ohio, but in the wintertime, I couldn't because of the snow and the ice. Don't you realize that when you start to speak the word of the living God that your life will change? I got kids that's learning how to do this who didn't do this. At, at one time or another, they used to look at dad like he was crazy. Like, dad, yeah, you just a Christian. You just believe in that because of who you are. I say, God, I'm, it's not about me. It's about everybody. Once again, verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not a man worthy that I should come under my roof. Ain't none of us worthy. The preacher ain't better than you. The singers ain't better than you. Sometimes people come to church and think that the people up front, no, they ain't no better than you. Ain't none of us worthy because the Bible says we have all sinned. All of us. Every last one of us sinned because there's sins of omission and commission. Meaning sins you know that you did wrong and then sins you just sin because you are a human being and your, your, your nature is sinful. You ever seen a little kid? You ain't got to teach a little kid how to be bad. He's going to be bad automatically. You don't have to teach a little kid how to be bad. You have to teach a little kid to do good. That's why the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. They didn't have to teach me how to mess with girls and be act, act like a jerk. They had to teach me what not to do according to God so I can get the blessings of God. That's what I had to be taught. And once I was taught that, then I started walking this. I've been retired since I was 30 years old from a job. Everybody's like, how do you live? The same way the birds live. When last time you see a bird go to work? I ain't never seen no bird hold no sign and say, we'll work for food. <laughs> My life is that simple. If God can take care of all these birds, how many ever birds there are in the world, you mean he can't take care of you? We make stuff so hard because we refuse to believe in God. That's what the scripture says. He said, if I'm going to take care of the animals, wouldn't I take care of you? If your son asks for, for a piece of bread, you're going to give him a rock? Is that what you're going to do to your own flesh and blood? We are the children of the Most High God, but until you understand who you are and you start living like that, this is, how, this is it. 
I'm known, I got a, another guy on Facebook who I met in 1990 who was homeless, in a homeless shelter. And I couldn't believe, he got his whole family, him, his wife, his kids, happy as can be in Columbus, cold, it's like 30 degrees. We out there talking. And he said he was a Christian. So we just touched and greeted and prayed and come to find out the man's life is getting better. It's, just, it's, it's that simple. There is, it's not, nothing hard about doing this. We make it hard. Verse 13 says, And Jesus said unto him, Centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast believed. you got to believe it. You have to believe it. What does John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that who, what, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to change. The same way you believe when you sat in that seat, it was going to hold your butt up off the ground. Who's going to sit in a chair with the, with the legs all wobbly and broke down? You ain't going to do it. But you have to believe the fact that if you put your trust and hope in Jesus Christ, your life going to change. And you can tell people. I tell people all the time. I used to tell them, I'm going to Florida. You ain't going to Florida. You broke. You ain't got no money. You got child support. You ain't going nowhere. There's people in Columbus still saying, I ain't going to Florida. Don't even realize I'm here. <laughs> still saying, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't got nothing. Because I was the same way in Ohio. Just doing ministry and living my life. He ain't, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't got nothing. He got a 92 raggedy van. That man ain't going to make it to Florida Street, let alone Florida <laughs> That's why I love God, because God, if you put your faith and hope in Jesus Christ, you cannot fail. Christians got testimonies after testimony and test testimony. And every last one of you got testimonies. All y'all can tell you, tell somebody else how you made it out of something and you don't know how you made it. And I guarantee you, I can explain to you how God brought you out of that thing. All of us got testimonies how the car almost hit us, or we almost fell, or we got sick. There's testimonies. As te soon as you start giving God the credit for what he did in your life, he's going to do more and much more. Just like this centurion soldier. He says, he said, Jesus said to him, go thy way, and as he, and, and 13, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. So whatever you believe, that's what's going to be done unto you. If you, can, if you believe your life can get better, it can get better. If you believe that God can heal you, you can be healed. Like I said, this Roman centurion soldier ain't had no, world, no more near right to Jesus Christ than anybody else in the world. Matter of fact, he had less right because those are the people... That, that was used to put him on the cross and crucify him. And this man had enough sense to pray to God for his servant to be healed. That's why the first thing, when, when somebody in my family called me and say so-and-so is sick, the first thing I do is pray. I say, I, I want God's will to be done, but for the most part, I pray I'm going to share this testimony with you, and then I'm done. I had a little cousin. My cousin has, has a daughter, and he called me. He know I'm a preacher. He said, Sean, um, Ron Shea just got rushed to the hospital in North Carolina. I said, what you want me to do? God said, ask him what you want me to do. They know I'm a preacher. What you want me to do? He said, I want you to pray. I said, okay, hung the phone. At that time, I was married. I told my wife, I said, I need to go to North Carolina and pray for my little cousin. He didn't ask me to come. He asked for prayer, but God told me to go lay hands on him. So we had enough money in the bank. I got a ticket, went down there. So I go down there. He's like, man, I didn't know you was coming. I said, you asked me to pray. I'm here to pray. So he picked me up at the airport, took me to the house, straight to the hospital. She in there. I go in there. Everybody else, like they planning the funeral. They all sitting around, heads down. The, uh, their pastor sitting there, head down. They, they, they planning the funeral. God said, go in there and pray for her. So I went in there, took the anointing oil, anointed her head. She started having a seizure. And they told me I had to leave. God said, your work is done. Go on, go on, back, go on about your business. So then, you have a seat, sir. We have a church. Yes, sir. So God told me my business was done to go on about, go on about my business. And she, she's going to be fine. That girl is, is she, she's perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with that girl today. You see her on Facebook, she dancing. Her mama had cancer, so that's what they was trying to say she was having. But she healed this. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I just believe that God can heal her. And to this day, she's healed living. I'm pretty sure Miss Marie got hundreds of stories of people getting healed and delivered. That's why she come and do what she do. Because she believed in people. Because God loved people, and she believed that. We go over here and feed the park sometime, and churches will come. And they'll preach to people like what I'm doing to you now, but they won't bring them no food. How are you going to talk to somebody when they starve and hungry? Their stomach is growling louder than what their ears can hear. You got to love people the way Jesus did. Jesus fed them the word, and he fed them naturally. But I'm here to tell you today, if you can believe like that centurion soldier, in verse 8 it said, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. I tell people this all the time. He's telling my kids before I whip their butts. I say, pray for mercy. Before I came in here, I said, because I want to tear you up. But if God tell me not to in my way, I'm going to leave you alone. 
Whenever you do something wrong, that's the first thing. That's the first thing you can say, mercy. That's what Brother Joe, that's his favorite word, mercy. Because we all ain't worthy. Ain't none of us worthy. Mr. Reed, me, ain't nobody worthy. Somehow or another, people don't beat themselves up so bad, they think they, ain't, they can't go to God. No, you better go to God. Because God is the only one that's going to have mercy. Police ain't going to have mercy. Drugs ain't going to have mercy. That bullet ain't going to have no mercy. Jesus Christ is the only one, and he died. That's why, once you understand that, that's why he says, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. When you speak the word, the word activates your faith. By me saying what God's going to do, I'm believing in that, and I'm knowing God's going to do it, I'm going to stand on it, even when I don't see it. I didn't know how long it was going to take from 2012 to 2015 to get here, but I told him, I told her I would be back. And I was able to live up to my word to the day. I came in October, it was 2012 October, and here it is, October, I'm showing up again. And she's like, I don't remember you. <laughs> but God told me. And I started packing by faith. 2015, January came, I started packing. I was like, what you doing closing the ministry? I said, I'm about to go to Florida. Man, you ain't got no money. How you going to go to Florida? <laughs> I'm not going to go to learn fooling with me. And they should know in Ohio because I had two full-time free barbershop beauty shops. Free. Where you come and get your hair done twice a month. That's what I had in Ohio. It's on the internet. You can back, back everything up. I'll show Miss Marie. Two full service barbershop beauty shops. Come in free. Had a car lot. I had housing with condos. We was working on a restaurant. I had two food carts, three stores on every side of town, and three churches with no money and retired at 30 years old. No credit. I ain't got no diploma or GED. Near none of it. What do I have? This right here. The word of God that said I can do all things through Jesus Christ which strengthens me. God has a purpose for every single one of you, and if you lock into that purpose, you are going to be completely unstoppable. But you got to speak the word, just like that centurion soldier did. What, what you think don't matter. Your idea is, God ain't got to honor you. He ain't got to honor what you say, but he do has to honor his word, because he died for his word. If you speak this word, the devils are scared of the word. The devils don't want you to The Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. What does that mean? That means you can either speak life or you can speak death on your life. If you wake up every day, I got a son who's on his way to the NBA, and I tell people he's gonna be playing for Miami. That's why God got that's another reason God, why God got me in Florida. I've been telling him since he, he didn't he didn't left that. I said, you're gonna be playing for Miami. That's why I'm here. I'm close. So I can watch some games. But I told I used to tell him when he when I first got custody of something great, I said, every day you wake up, you look in the mirror and you tell yourself you're a winner. Every day you tell yourself that. Regardless of what anybody tell you, how your day went, how you are, I say, you start building yourself up. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence. Every last one of us got confidence in something, pride in something. But if you put your confidence in this word, you are unstoppable. And then when you touch and agree according to Matthew 18, 19, that's the scripture you should lock in your head. It says, if any two touch and agree believing, God will do it for you. Go up to a believer and touch and agree, like, look, I need this, I need that, I need that. God will do it just according to his will. Amen? Amen. Let us stand so we can pray and get out the way. The whole world is y'all's. God gave it, he died for it. It's a matter of you taking it. Speak the word. Speak the word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you and praise you, Father God, that you're a man that cannot lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. Everything you said you're going to do, and you will not tarry, Father God. 2016 is going to be a year and a season of time, Father God, that you're going to bless people like you've never blessed them before. You're going to do exactly what you said you were going to do, Father God. Just ask and pray that you touch the hearts and minds of people, Father God, who sincerely want to know you, Lord Jesus. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, we denounce and cast out every plague, sickness, and disease, Father God. I pray you touch their hearts, Father God. Whatever dreams and desires they have, Father God, that you gave them as children, Father God, you place back in their hearts, Father God, so they can accomplish it according to your word. So when people see them, they will say, when they went to their church, their life started to change. When they start to speak the word, their life started to change, Father God. We stand in agreement right now in the name of Jesus for the things you're going to do and everything we just said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning.